What is up guys? Thanks for watching as always. Um, today we're straying a little bit of what we usually do. Um, we are still making stick baits, uh, but I've had a big request for making a stencil for the stick baits that I make. And I'm usually not a big fan of it because it really reduces uh, the creativity input in making lures. Um, but because I had so many requests, I figured I might as well do it. So this video I'll show you the process of uh, me making a very easy to use stick bait. Um, as you saw in the intro it swims uh, really really well on the straight retrieve. Um, and I'll also show you the process of how I kind of uh, go about uh, designing it and then uh, making the stencil um, along the way of making the lure as well. So uh, we start off with a regular design as usual. Um, just cut it out of paper and um, put it onto the wood to get the cut out on the bandsaw. Um, you'll see me make a lot of changes over time just to make it easier for uh, people that are just starting. Um, this channel really is focused on uh, getting people into uh, lure making. Um, also doing a lot of fishing on the side of it but they'll come later. <laughs> Um, but really trying to get people into lure making and the best way to do that is to give them the um, easiest way in um, and let them get creative with their own designs later on so um, I'll show you how that goes and um, I'll also show you how I make the lure a lot easier to use um, you'll see me uh, reduce the tail at one point as well just to make it easier to swim etc etc so uh, either way we got the cut out here uh, looking pretty decent. Um, I cut a side of it so the uh, thickness of the wood is exactly 30 millimeter. Um, that's one inch and uh, one six or something, but it should be like uh, a 30 mil thickness. So that's perfect. Should be easy to find uh, uh, 30 mil wood thickness wise, so everyone can use it. Uh, what you'll also see in this video is that there's a, a, a wide uh, amount of uh, variety, uh, variables sorry, that um, uh, you'll find in making these type of lures. Uh, that all is also is the reason why I'm not a huge fan of stencils because uh, you know variables are very easy to change over slightly, and the stencil won't give you a whole lot. But it's some basic information to start on. Um, so I guess that's a pretty good thing to to go for. Um, here I'm drawing the center line so I know where the wire and the weights have got to go. Um, this is all still pretty straightforward. Cool. Now you um, within uh, designing these type of baits uh, I usually do it off the top of my head but um, these really simple stick baits uh, that are weighted all the way throughout the body they are fairly well rear weighted so you can cast them really well but uh, they've got a lot of weight in the center of the body as well to make them swim really really well um, I just like to put in some extra time to make sure that I've got the weights in the exact uh, right spot um, rule of thumb is if you drill a weight hole deeper than um, it should be it's going to make you lure spin so that's what we'd like to stay away from anyway here we've got the cutout um, pretty much ready to um, start shaping the body better. But here we kind of realized that we kind of want to reduce the tail uh, as well. So we've done that and we've decided on where we want the weight holes to be. Now this is all in correlation with the body mass at the spot of the weight hole. So if the body is deeper, then obviously there's going to be more weight. Um, technically, if you, the best way I guess to put it is if you'd cut the lure in, the, in half in the exact spot where you're going to put the weight, the more surface area you'll have from the um, cut through, uh, the more weight you're going to have to put in to get it all balanced through. Now obviously with rear weighted lures it's going to be more weight um, located towards the tail uh, but it's not necessary to have a big ball of weight sitting all the way at the tail as most lure um, uh, GT lures have. Uh, the reason for that is it's actually quite simple for the manufacturer just to put a big chunk of weight at the tail 
um, but to get it to cast well tail forward you only have to have a surplus of weight compared to the rest of the body um, and that will help it tremendously so here we just drill in the holes uh, we'll also drill some indicators for where the hook hangers are going to be um, that actually changes over later on in the process but um, now oh well, it's a good way to get it started um, and here we're just making sure that we've got the um, symmetrical printout on where the uh, uh, down, cut, uh, down cuts from the body are going to be so we're going to determine the head shape here, the thickness of the tail etc Uh, folded uh, pieces of paper are going to be your best friend in determining symmetry because obviously it's very easy to just uh, cut out one side and have a double cut out on the other side. Very simple little trick. So here we just start carving the body, uh, getting it into shape. The real, the, the whole process really isn't uh, much different to uh, all the other stick base that we make. Uh, but I just kind of want to show you the process of this stick bait and how I uh, over time developed the stencil as well. The stencil will be available in the description by the way in case you hadn't already figured out. Now here we've got the, uh, the body ready to be sanded. And that's looking pretty good. Now I decided to go for a bit higher uh, stick bait and with high I mean um, how tall it is from belly to back um, reason for that is it gives you a lot bigger window of uh, um, how to balance it so for starters it's going to be much easier uh, and on top of that it's going to be very easy to give it a very nice rolling wobbling action at a slow pace so we had to work on this pretty hard but I wanted to get this body down to exact, exactly 60 grams so it, it's easy to determine the ratio, it's a nice round number. Uh, it's easy to determine the ratio from body to added weight, etc. Also what is quite important is the type of wood that you're going to be using. So for um, this particular body it's going to be a, a 17 centimeter long body, so 170 mils. Um, I've got all the numbers on the stencil by the way. Um, the unweighted body was 60 grams. Uh, this is a quite a cheap wood that I don't really use at all. Uh, reason I'm using it is because it's readily available. This is, I believe, oak, and I got it from Home Depot, and it's really cheap. Uh, not the greatest craft wood to work with, definitely not, uh, but very readily available for everyone. So. so here we've added the weight, as you can see, and here we're weighing the lure. And you'll see that it's an exactly 120 grams. So we started off with an unweighted body of 60 grams. Uh, we added the weight, so that includes the wiring um, and the balance weight. And we've added a total of 60 grams of uh, added weight. So those are good round numbers. It's going to be easy uh, to use. Uh, what I will say is uh, it, it's definitely possible to add a little bit more. So we can add, uh, I'd say, another 10 grams of weight. Um, to balance it out in a little bit of a different way if you want to let it sit tail down a little bit more or even head down whatever you prefer um, you can definitely uh, play around with those weights now for the beginners I wouldn't uh, suggest that you do this but I do like uh, to do some um, face carving as well uh, it's quite tedious it's very easy to mess up um, but I sometimes kind of see these stick baits as practice, so uh, it's a missed opportunity if I don't use them. It's always ways to improve. So once I got my design ready, I just uh, kind of start carving from there. Nothing special, nothing uh, out of the ordinary. I'll also say if you pay really good attention to how you finish off baits, a very basic stick bait that are just one color of paint. Um, but everything is very well placed and the epoxy is nice uh, those will look a million times better than somebody that went through extensive lengths of uh, finishing off the lure but it's not done properly 
So, yeah, I, I, I'd suggest uh, sticking with an easy paint job and uh, some pretty basic eyes and a good clear epoxy coat over uh, going through the, uh, jumping through all the hoops of foiling and uh, face carving and uh, all the above. So this time we're doing something a little bit different with the foiling. Uh, I'm actually cutting out the shapes of the foil um, and sticking them onto the body before I'm going to make the foil cuts. Uh, reason for that being um, I'm actually doing a, a round scale cut versus a straight scale, what I usually do. Um, I made a little tool to help me with that. Uh, now in hindsight, hindsight is always going to be uh, uh, not very helpful, but I should have recorded how I made the tool. It's essentially a um, exacto knife blade that I heated up and cooled down rapidly under water a couple of times so it weakens the metal and I've bent it around a little screw so it's red, uh, round sorry and then I uh, snipped off the ends so that I'm left with about half a circle so exactly uh, a scale uh, and I fixed it to the end of uh, a brush here and I've tied it off and here you see me use it to make an uh, indentation in the foil now the only issue is um, to get the indentation done properly I have to press quite hard and that means that the foil is going to give. Um, so where I was uh, usually able to make a nice scra a straight scratch with the straight carving of the straight cutting of the foil uh, without actually fully cutting the foil, um, right now I'm going through the foil completely so if I would have had to transfer over the foil uh, from the strip onto the body uh, it would have left all the scales, it kind of just broken off, it would have been mission impossible, so uh, this makes it a little bit easier, makes it way easier actually. I was actually quite surprised how well this uh, little tool worked. Again, foiling is always going to be a tedious job, but you know, it is what it is. So I'll be using this tool uh, with future baits for sure. It'll look good, especially on the bigger baits. So that's all done, pretty happy with the result. Now we're just doing some face foiling, again nothing special, but you have to make sure that you take your time. Now what I'm doing here is I'm using the end of a plier to actually make some dents into the wood where the uh, gill covers are. Uh, once I stick the foil over the uh, gill covers, it actually leaves a little bit of an indentation. Um, actually gives it a little bit of a nice contrast onto the, uh, the foiling effect. You'll see what I mean a little bit later on. You can use other tools as well. This is the end of uh, a pair of needle nose pliers, but you'll see the dents in the wood there. Uh, once I put the, the foil over it, you'll uh, see all about it. If you turn it a little bit, actually um, creates a bit bigger of a hole. So I don't want them to all look the same because it looks pretty bad. Um, so mix it up a little bit. I haven't really shown this before on any videos, I don't think. I don't really do it. Um, but it, it helps. I don't really like doing it with really big baits because it just becomes a bit of a mess. But with the smaller ones, you can get away with it. Cool, that looks nice. I just 
ready to be foiled. So I usually uh, like to do one piece at a time of the gill covers. I don't want to do them all at once, uh, simply because it's going to uh, be wrinkling the foil. There's too many gaps and cracks that you have to cover. So, and especially with these little indentations in the gill covers, it'll make a bit of a difference. So. It's all pretty straightforward. I just use the um, the box cutter knife to force the uh, foil into the um, carved out slots from the gill covers, uh, and then obviously I cut the excess off. So here the face is all foiled up, um, putting the eye on to see what it's going to look like, and that's looking really neat. I've actually thought about. <laughs> Um, not painting one of these baits at all and just uh, leaving uh, the wood there but the only problem is if you've used um, belly uh, weighting uh, unfortunately it doesn't cover it up but I guess you could get away with just uh, a silver spray paint job on the bottom <laughs> maybe next time good idea for a new video maybe so here we're just creating some fins now the way that we want to do it, we want to create um, some symmetrical fin rays. Uh, the way that we do it is we cut out a design for a fin first um, and then we we'll, um, copy the outside line of the top ray over um, and then make another one right underneath and then we cut those two bits out. So we've got essentially um, two rays that are the exact same, but they're kind of a little bit fanned out from each other. Uh, that allows you to make cuts that are in the exact same uh, separation as one or the other, and there you see the result. All these fin rays are um, in the exact same uh, spread. So that's perfect. It's worth taking an extra minute to uh, to do that. Otherwise, this, uh, those rays look all over the shop. So we've uh, added the spray, pa spray paint coat. Now obviously it's not very important what color you want, uh, it's whatever you prefer yourself. Uh, the fi I'll be honest, the fish is not going to care at all. But it's uh, cool to have a variety of uh, lure colors. Uh, I always say the best color on a lure is the one you are most confident with, because confidence is big in uh, fishing. So um, Either way, here we're putting the fins on, uh, putting the eyes on as well. And uh, then she'll be ready for the uh, last epoxy coat. Cool, that's looking pretty cool. We added some glitters as well as you can see. So pretty neat. Kind of like a fusilier color. If you don't know what a fusilier is, it's a, a little uh, fish that lives on the uh, reefs all over the world, and they're a prime food for a lot of the fish that we target with stick baits. Awesome. And here she's finished up from the last epoxy coat. Looking pretty good. Ready to be tested. So as you saw in the intro, uh, this lure is a crazy good wiggle. It actually looks like I'm twitching the lure when you see it come in for the first time. Uh, but that's just it wiggling from one side to the other. Uh, that's what good weight placement does. to make it erratic enough that it swings from side to side but prevents it from spinning that's a good lure and it's a little bit easier to do with these um, higher shouldered stick baits the taller stick baits from back to belly it's a bit easier to do so so here you see me actually twitching the lure so it's like a, just a slight subsurface walk in the dog action Pretty happy with the result. There you go, that's that walk in the dog action. Very good. But on the straight retrieve, it's deadly too, so. Perfect. It'll even go on fast retrieves, dives down quite nice as a good stick bait shirt. This one will do everything a stick bait shirt. 
Um, here's the stencil. I've attached a link in the description. Hope you enjoy, guys. Cheers.